Hi, I'm Anne, the Interpretive and Volunteer Coordinator for Friends of Vista House, located just east of Portland, Oregon, on the historic Columbia River Highway, overlooking the scenic Columbia River Gorge. My program is going to last about 10 minutes, so get comfy, grab a drink or a snack. If you're driving, please press pause. I'll be here when you get back. Let's consider that idea for a moment. You can stop this video and come back to it whenever you want. You can watch it on your phone or your computer or while you're driving, but please don't do that. At the beginning of the 20th century, none of that was possible. Very few people had telephones in their homes and those phones weren't mobile. Now, many of us have smartphones. People traveled by horse or by train because cars were incredibly expensive. Columbia River Gorge didn't even have a road. Now we can drive through the gorge on a freeway in cars that are affordable for many people. The only social media were books and newspapers, which could take weeks or longer to reach an audience. Now we can watch a video, read a news story, or share a post online in an instant with people all over the world. This program is about Eva Emery Dye, a pioneering Oregon writer whose advocacy for expanded Oregon tourism and votes for women were combined in her role at the 1905 Lewis and Clark exhibition in Portland, an event which helped accelerate changes underway at the beginning of the 20th century. Eva was skilled at the mass communication of her time, writing newspaper articles, publishing books, and making public speaking appearances. When she was growing up in Illinois in the 1850s, Eva loved reading stories of adventure and exploration. She also fell in love with writing, publishing poems while she was still in high school. Maybe we can imagine her a bit like a teenager today, watching TikTok dance videos and trying them out for herself. Eva wanted to go to college and, despite her father's wishes, found a job as a teacher and put herself through school. Soon after graduating, she married Charles Dye, a fellow student, and a few years later, they moved to Oregon City, the end of the Oregon Trail. When Eva arrived in Oregon City, she fell in love. She later said, I began writing as soon as I reached this old and romantic city. I saw beautiful historical material lying around like nuggets. Now, Eva had the chance to research and write stories of exploration for herself. Her first book, McLaughlin in Old Oregon, was published in 1900. It was a fictionalized account of the life of John McLaughlin, a mid 19th century Oregon pioneer. The book was a hit, going into multiple printings and being published in Canada and England. Soon, Eva was giving newspaper interviews and traveling the country to give public speaking appearances. She was writing columns about Oregon pioneers and researching other historical topics. Eva became an advocate for westward expansion, believing it was necessary for the economic security of the country. Eva believed that Oregon held the key if only more people knew about the state and its opportunities. During this time, Eva also began researching William Clark, co-leader of the Lewis and Clark expedition. She met with members of the Clark family and they gave her access to his papers. She also learned about Sacagawea, the Shoshone woman who accompanied the expedition. Eva decided her next book would be about the expedition and Sacagawea in particular. She was going to call it The Conquest. But promoting Oregon, researching and writing The Conquest weren't the only things Eva was up to. She was also a passionate and active advocate for the cause of women's suffrage, votes for women. She wrote letters to newspaper editors, joined public service clubs for women, and circulated petitions. Eva was an, a leader in the Oregon suffrage movement, along with Abigail Scott Dunaway and Sarah A. Evans. Her nationwide speaking engagements also included talks about women's suffrage. A newspaper profile in 1902 described Eva as a woman of very sunny temperament and strong nerves. Major William Hancock Clark, grandson of William Clark, said of Eva, she has enough energy to supply a dozen ordinary women. 
Eva was going to need every bit of that energy. The Conquest, Eva's book about Lewis and Clark, was published in 1902. It was a smash. Until that point, Sacagawea was little known to the public. Eva depicted her as a mother and a guide whose presence on the exhibition signaled their peaceful intent. She argued that without Sacagawea as a leader and a guide, the expedition would have failed entirely. In one fell swoop, Eva equated westward expansion necessary for the security of the country with the expansion of public roles for women. In her mind, you couldn't have one without the other. Eva was passionate and excited about Western expansion and the expansion of rights for women. What causes have you felt passionate and excited about? How did you share that excitement? Now we can tell everyone all over the world in an instant. Eva had to research, write, plan, and wait. But she didn't have to wait long. Eva Emery Dye was an active participant in both the 1905 Lewis and Clark Exhibition and the National American Women's Suffrage Association Convention, both held in Portland. She helped ensure that the two events overlapped, guaranteeing that her favorite causes, expanded Oregon tourism and commerce, and votes for women would get a national stage. The 1905 exhibition was a world's fair. In theory, it was meant to recognize the 100th anniversary of the expedition, but in reality, it was meant to showcase Oregon tourism and commerce on a grand scale. A World's Fair guaranteed a spotlight for Oregon. The Oregon Women's Club sprang into action. They had been organized for years to promote public health and public service, education, and in some cases, votes for women. They began to lobby the exhibition board for a role for women in the event. They believed they could offer organized, energetic support for the exhibition. The men in charge didn't see it that way, although women's clubs had played big roles in previous World's Fairs in Chicago and St. Louis. Instead, the men tried to establish women's clubs specifically devoted to the exhibition. In practice, these clubs quickly merged with the women's existing club network, and they received no official role in the planning or exhibition execution of the big exhibit. Around this time, Eva had a stroke of inspiration. She proposed a statue of Sacagawea to be erected on the fairgrounds of the exhibition. This was an idea the men in charge liked, and they gave permission for it to move forward. The women's clubs began holding fundraising. They sold buttons with images of Sacagawea and sent signed copies of the conquest to donors. Although they raised a good sum of money from women around the country, a funding shortfall had to be filled by members of the Portland business community. Alice Cooper, a sculptor in Chicago, not the musician, was chosen to create the sculpture of Sacagawea. Denied a platform on the 1905 World Exhibition stage, the Oregon suffragists began working to find other ways to bring suffrage to national attention. They successfully lobbied the NAWSA to hold its annual convention in Portland at the same time. It was the first time a convention had been held on the West Coast and in conjunction with a World's Fair. It was a major score and it was guaranteed to raise the profile of the convention. Best of all, the famous Susan B. Anthony agreed to appear at the convention and speak at the Sacagawea statue unveiling. The NAWSA convention held only one official event on the exhibition fairgrounds, a final reception in honor of Susan B. Anthony on July 5th. It was the best attended event since the exhibition had opened a month earlier. The statue unveiling of Sacagawea was held the next day on the exhibition fairgrounds. It established a clear link between the celebration of Sacagawea and suffrage for women. Speakers made a direct connection between the two. Those speakers were Susan B. Anthony and Eva Emery Dye. 
The events of 1905 in Portland accomplished what Eva, the suffragists, and the Oregon business community set out to do. They put expanded Oregon tourism and commerce and votes for women on a national stage. Eva Emery Dye was a pioneering Oregon writer whose advocacy for votes for women and expanded tourism in Oregon combined in her role at the 1905 Lewis and Clark exhibition, ensuring that her two favorite causes would receive national attention. Eva was skilled at the mass communication of her time, writing newspaper articles, publishing books, and giving public talks. Her active participation in the events of 1905 guaranteed that national stage so that her causes could be seen all over the country. In the decade following these events, Eva continued to publicly advocate for suffrage and for expanded Oregon tourism. In 1912, the vote was granted to women in Oregon, and in 1915, construction began on the Columbia River Highway. Eva was passionate about her causes and took action. What causes are you passionate about? How can you take action and advocate? If you've enjoyed learning about Eva Amory Dye and would like to learn about other lesser known Oregon pioneers, you can take action by emailing me at the address on screen. And if you're feeling really passionate about Oregon history, you can volunteer with us. Just fill out the contact form on our website. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope to see you soon at Vista House.